Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Pastor Kim and this is uh, French River Lutheran Church's um, Lenten services uh, for this year. This is the fourth Sunday or fourth Wednesday in Lent and we are glad to have you with us from wherever you are uh, joining us uh, from the comfort of your homes um, as we delve into scripture and of poetry uh, as we have been doing the last few weeks. Uh, we are reading uh, a few of Mary Oliver's poems, who uh, is an American uh, liturgist. Uh, is that right? Liturgist? Yeah, I don't know. I'm making up words today. Anyway, uh, she is a poet. That's probably the more correct word. And we are following along with her poems as they compare to our daily lives um, uh, alongside scripture, which is part of our faith lives uh, that are often interwoven. And so join us as we read scripture and um, uh, one of these wonderful poems. Um, if you are looking for where you can find the poem to follow along yourself, it's located on uh, the uh, webpage, our French River webpage under bulletins and documents, and it should be under Lenten poems. Uh, so you can join along uh, reading along with us. But today, let us begin with a bit of scripture that might be really familiar to a lot of you. Thank you, Phil. The Gospel according to John, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the poem from Mary Oliver today uh, is titled, Some Questions You Might Ask. Is the soul solid, like iron? Or is it tender and breakable, like the wings of a moth in the beak of the owl? Who has it and who doesn't? I keep looking around me. The face of the moose is as sad as the face of Jesus. The swan opens her wings slowly. In the fall, the black bear carries leaves into the darkness. One question leads to another. Does it have a shape, like an iceberg, like the eye of a hummingbird? Does it have one lung, like the snake and the scallop? Why should I have it and not the anteater who loves her children? Why should I have it and not the camel? Come to think of it, what about maple trees? Or what about the blue iris? What about all the little stones sitting alone in the moonlight? What about roses and lemons and their shining leaves? What about the grass?
So within the gospel text, the John 3.16 text, we often know that for God to love the world, that he gave his only son so that we may have eternal life. But the rest of it is a little bit of a challenge, isn't it? Grace and judgment abounds in this passage. Moses, in our history of faith, lifted up and saved all the afflicted Israelites, not just the ones he liked or just a few, but all were considered worthy and loved. In our, uh, in our uh, gospel uh, lesson of this week and the other readings, there's the story about the snakes, which I preached on, and the, the ankle biters, you know, the things that were really hard, but yet God still lifted up and saved even those people that drive us crazy, right? So when we look at the gospel text of this uh, proclamation, even in the midst of a judgment and grace, God's son came not to condemn the world, but in order that he might open our eyes, open our hearts, in order that he might save it and save us. The poem by Mary Oliver this week can be read and heard as a proactive approach where does the soul lie? How come we might consider ourselves more worthy than another to have a soul, to have a light? Rifling that people aren't just parts of creation that are held up as and beloved, but we also aren't like the bear or the hummingbirds or the snakes or the sea creatures, beautiful forsythias that grow or tall white pines included in beloved creation why don't we include them in the idea of this love so god so saved the world sometimes mercy is a hard thing for a lot of us forgiveness is a hard thing for a lot of us so as a practice or an action in this time and place Instead of being an ankle biter or assuming the worst about someone or assuming that they aren't cared about or loved by anyone, even a person you really cannot stand, light a candle of hope within yourselves, either literally or um, figuratively in your head, and pray for grace and mercy. Look for those Kingdom of God-like moments I've often talked about already as your pastor. Those places and spaces where good flourishes from people that you uh, would likely not think to have good come from. And relish in the good news and the good graces that come every day upon us. I know for myself, uh, within the last few weeks, I've seen grace and mercy and kindness come out of the woodwork um, in my, my accident that I had right here, I met so many kind neighbors and people uh, within the accident. And in the days following, I kept having this kind of or interperspective um, thinking and thought and prayer about it. And I'm thinking, you know, for the last how many years we've been fighting about politics, we've been fighting about faith and who's worthy and unworthy and all this stuff pandemic about wearing masks and all this stuff but in mo moments of crisis such as that experience i looked at these people and thought you are angels to me you are holy people who come to the aid of a stranger and in that moment you see that connection of love and hope gathered right there and so in moments like that in your life Take away those labels that you want to put on people. Take away those ideas that you have based on their likes or your likes. And instead, see them for who they truly, truly are. Beloved by God. All right, amen to that. Amen. All right, we are going to continue with our intercessory hymn, uh, Watch, O Lord. Please sing along with us or hum along with us as we pray for the world and all those around us. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge your weary ones in your love. 
At this time, I would like to invite you, if you are wondering about uh, this time and place with pandemic, how you can give at this time. Uh, we have different ways. Um, if you are coming to in-person church, uh, there's an offering plate in the back on Sunday mornings. You can give at that time. Also, uh, there is a drop box outside of the church, a safe, secure drop box outside under the canopy. Uh, you can do online giving or you can mail in your offering and all of those gifts are uh, graciously and uh, gratefully uh, uh, appreciated in this time and place. Uh, you can continue to worship with us uh, uh, the next few weeks uh, for Lenten worship. We also invite you to join us on Sunday mornings either in person or online. Uh, if you are in person, we ask you wear, that you wear a mask uh, and stay uh, distant uh, from any other people that are not in your family or your COVID bubble. Uh, you can figure out where to sit if you do come in church because the pew cushions have been removed uh, from the seats uh, where uh, you aren't supposed to sit or are supposed to sit. You'll figure it out once you get here. Otherwise, you can join us online at French River Lutheran Church. Uh, and uh, we would love to have you. I'd like to give special thanks to my helpers today. Uh, uh, David Feebigger Fee up on the organ. We're thankful for you. Uh, David or uh, Phil Jensen uh, here who is singing and reading alongside me. And Rich Hogue who is on our uh, tech specs over there. So thank you so much. And as we send you out into the world today uh, in contemplation and in hope, uh, let us pray. God of, all, God of all creation, help us to see the world that you have made, the world you mean to save. Show us the breadth for your love. Amen. Amen. Have a good night.